The jailhouse phone calls that were released of Jody Hildebrandt and Ruby Frankie tell us everything we need to know about how guilty they think they really are, and we're going to talk about it in today's video. Hello, Sofa Squad, and welcome back to the sofa. The sofa's here. Our little mascot, Mr. Roscoe, is not here, though. He's actually sleeping in the other room and doesn't realize that I'm recording, so I just let him sleep. And my name's Paul, and I'm sitting in front of the sofa. Now, like I said, we are going to continue our discussion on all of this evidence that has come out in the Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt case. Specifically today, we're going to be reviewing some of those phone calls uh, from the jailhouse phone calls of both Jody and Ruby. <laughs> It, 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 literally, these just tell you everything you need to know about it, in my opinion. Um, I think it becomes quite clear that we what we saw take place as sentencing was a total sham. But we already knew that now, didn't we? Now, what we're going to be doing in this is, like I said, we'll be listening to the phone call. So I'll put some visuals up there, but just understand it's phone calls we're listening to. Now, if you want to follow me outside of the YouTubes here, well, I do have an Instagram. Instagram. It's on the screen. It's in the description. Go on, click it. Um, so that's enough. Let's go ahead and get into this because I am dying to talk to you all about it. This is a call from and paid for by Ruby Frankie Purgatory Correction. An inmate at Purgatory Correctional Facility. This call is subject to recording and monitoring. If you don't wish to talk, hang up now. Okay, well, you know that this phone call is being recorded. Yes, that will come out. That will come out. Are we in the news? It sounds like. At, at least you're in the news. I don't know about me. I don't know what he's talking about. But. Okay, so a couple of things with these first things right here. Number one, just the irony of that place being called Purgatory. There's that. Number two, Kevin. So this is Kevin. This is Ruby on the phone, okay? Um, Kevin being like, this is recorded. I know that'll come out. Then immediately, are we in the news? Literally, one thing that I got from this is how image conscience and attention seeking she is still. We already knew she was, but even in this moment, it's like, oh yeah, she just is lapping it up. Are we in the news? You know, one thing that really astounded me through this, and I'll go ahead and say it now so that you can kind of listen to my commentary and whatnot through the lens that I'm looking at it through. So we can be on the same page as what I'm getting at. Good Lord. Um, Listening to Ruby talk, I was like, oh, she very quickly was like, this is what the this is what everyone around me needs to hear to get out of this situation. So I'm just going to reflect it back. She still has the God complex, whereas Jody is often just like, yeah, it all makes sense. I'm a biblical character, you know, kind of a thing where you're just like, um, yeah, girl, you need to take a page from Ruby because she's going to probably fare much better than Jody, which obviously we haven't gotten to completely with their sentences yet, but you know what I'm saying. Here's the thing, and I still stand by this. I think they're both evil, but I now, the more and more of this evidence I look at, I'm like, whoa, Ruby is way more calculating. I would almost say more so than Jody, right? Jody comes off to me as they're both disturbed, but Jody's more disturbed, whereas Ruby is more calculated evil, if that makes sense. Uh, and I think that that's on display here in these phone calls, so let's keep listening to them. I'm wondering if they went to Sherry to, like, ask her questions. I don't know. These bookings are public. I, I know they are. And... A couple of months ago, Business Insider was reaching out to me, and I ignored their email, but um, I'm going dark. This is a witch. I'm not at BYU. I'm not at BYU anymore, so I don't know how they're going to find me. Yeah, maybe it was a blessing. This is a witch hunt. I've, I've, the devil's been after me for years. Okay, again, her with, let's start with the end of it. This is a witch hunt. She loves the fact that she thinks it's a witch hunt. The fact that somebody is in her world chasing her down and that she garners this kind of attention, doesn't matter if it's negative or bad, she's eating it up. Now, you heard at the very beginning, I wonder if they'll ask Sherry questions. This is their daughter. 
also one thing I have taken from this evidence that has come forth, and this I'm speaking to Kevin and Ruby, where I'm like, oh, there's way more of an awareness of what they're doing is not right, right? Um, especially in Kevin's part. You know, this, this hyper-awareness of, this is recorded, but they talked to so-and-so. You know, well, they're trying to reach out to me, but I'm ignoring this. You know, this is going to go public. You know, this isn't a level of, well, let me rephrase that. I think part of it is a level of people who are so entitled in their behavior, they see nothing wrong with what they did to their children. And then another part of it is just a... Yeah, but even if you think there is something wrong with this, we're still going to do it because we're better than you and we know better. You know, there is also this God complex, and I'm not sure if Kevin has it, but definitely Ruby does, right? And it just shines through. Let's keep going. Adults have a really hard time understanding that children can be full of evil and what that takes to fight it. You've seen what it takes to fight evil. It's not the person you're fighting. And it can look like something it's not. And you've been there, you know that. And so I don't know any adults who are going to see the truth. So I'm calm about this, and I just pray that you'll hang in there. I mean, literally, I'll drink it from the damn cup. It cannot roll my eyes hard enough. Adults don't see that children are evil. Here's the thing that also strikes me about specifically Ruby and Jody, but people like this, they need to feel like they know more. They know better. Most adults don't get this. Like they, they are the blessed ones, right? And we see this in these narratives of like, I, I'm sorry, but from what I've seen here, Lori Daybell and Chad Daybell will give their stamp of approval to these people. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's literally the same type BS. So this whole complex of wanting to be, it's almost like the spiritual narcissism, right? Of, you know, we're more informed, we're more enlightened, we're more chosen. You know, the hiding behind these concepts to facilitate their evilness, right? You know, and when you heard her say, evil comes in all forms, I'm like, yeah, we're listening to it right now, and it's absolute for manifestation named Ruby damn Frankie okay number one but also notice how she kept saying you've seen that you've witnessed that this is where she's talking it's like it, this is how I interpret this whatever she's convinced herself that these children are possessed by there's been times that she's been like see Kevin I told you so we're gonna have to cut her hair off you know what I'm saying and it, clearly he just went along with whatever right so and you notice he didn't say anything, right? He's like, girl, don't throw me under the bus. <laughs> He's like, I ain't, I'm not doing no time for this. I'll take your phone call and everything, but mm -mm, I don't know what you're talking about. He's probably enjoying the break from her, let's be honest. Um, but it just, again, it's like reading between the lines just tells you, oh yeah, he, he knew what was going on here. You know, probably had to listen to her sermons day in and day out. The most upsetting thing is that I am completely misunderstood. That is the most horrible feeling. Like my own family misunderstands me, they misinterpret me, and, and poor Jody, they, they misinterpret her, they misunderstand her. She puts her neck out on the line for people and then they get mad at her. I mean, it is just horrendous. It's horrendous. Now, this is the beginning of this situation, right? We're getting ready to listen to the calls when she changes her tune about Jody. So this is still when she's under the Jody spell. I would argue that she's not under the Jody spell, but when she realized that she has to pretend that she was in order to get out of trouble and, and repent and take accountability and all that, she then turned the narrative. Key factor of this clip here, the most horrible thing is that I've been misunderstood. Not that your child is in the condition that they were when they escaped Jody's house and went to the neighbors. That's not the most horrible thing. You see the normalcy that this crowd operates under. You know, when we hear Jody's phone calls, she does not think she did one thing wrong. Okay, period, end of damn story, right? Nothing wrong at all. She sees nothing wrong with us. We're the crazy ones for thinking a child in that condition should be of concern, right? And so, but they tell them themselves this way. This is completely normal to them. He's 35 years in this, and he said, even if you are acquitted and um, 
are released, they will place legal restrictions on your access to the under-18 children. I figured such. I figured such. God told me. God told me when I was driving before I called you. I didn't have any information. I didn't know anything. And the Spirit said, your children are going to be removed. And I just, I cried out loud. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not done. I'm not ready. And God told me I'm done. And I, I just, oh. So. Satan has taken everything away from me that I love. And I'm a good woman. I don't do naughty things. I don't do naughty things. I'm a really good girl. There's so much to unpack here with this one. Let's just start from the end. I'm a really good girl. I don't do naughty things. Like this reversion back to like little kid talk is just creeping me out, number one. Number two, the context of what she's saying. I don't do naughty things. Yes, you do. Rewind a little bit. Um, Satan. Satan's taken everything from me. No, honey, you have, okay? Again, zero accountability. It's Satan's fault. Okay. Rewind a little bit. God told me that was going to happen. I have a direct line with him. Nobody else does. It's that kind of... I, again, I just call it religious narcissism. I don't know what else. You, drop in the comments, whatever you call it. But this whole thing of like, you know, I've got God on speed dial. I know you peasants don't, but I do. I'm more chosen than you are. Okay? Yes. Excuse me, waiter. Where do the chosen people sit? Because I know it's not these people. You know what I'm saying? It's like... It absolutely turns my stomach. I'm so sick and tired of seeing these cases and seeing these headlines where these horrific, horrifying stories come out and the perpetrators hide behind this level of, like, they're chosen, so therefore it fits the narrative for whatever reason, right? Hiding behind religion to do these crimes, it absolutely repulses me and angers me way more than it should. I could not come out of this without, without his grace without his mercy, without his help. This has been the strangest and the most miraculous intervention. It, it put everybody where they needed to be. It separated me from Jody, so I'm not hearing her. And I think just being gone and not hearing her has cleared a lot of things up for me. Okay, so here we are. The divine intervention, right? You know, this is coming along. It's gotten Jody away from me. Not hearing her has cleared my thinking and all this. So this is my next thought. I'm like, so what happens when you get out? And now I know this person is, you know, past or whatever. You meet the next David Koresh or Charles Manson. What happens then? You know what I'm saying? Because this is my thing with her thinking. You know, if you are this triggered and influenced to the degree of this where it's all of a sudden oh yeah i got away from jody so i can think clearly now and you know and again has to cling on to the religious thing with it you know like oh let me hold on to this like let me give it some meaning with that instead of just and, and i don't have a, i don't want to come off like i'm like having some issue broadly with religion i don't at all right um it's a beautiful thing until it's weaponized and i feel like people like this weaponize it for their evil and their excuses and they're this and they're that and i feel like that's a hundred percent what she's doing here and then she just moves the marker to be like okay well now we're gonna go down this road so we'll say it's this you know instead of like no look at your own actions look at what you did this it, it, it's just, there's nothing you know divine about this right it's horrifying did you did you see that Jody pled guilty today? I did see that. Yes, is that a relief for you? Mhm. Mm yeah, it's a big relief. It's a big relief. There there would have been positive the other way too had she not pled guilty. There's enough evidence that she would have been could have been convicted for life, but um that would have been messy. It would have been really messy and the kids would have 
so um, so do you and her get the same outcome no matter what now or is there a chance that it would be different that's a that's a really good question that's one that I've asked Lamar um, no we can still have different outcomes so what was interesting to me about this is number one she's changed her tune like yeah you know she played guilty that does make me feel good and you know and she stops where she says and the kids here's the thing number one if they both if what ruby's trying to paint here is that she's the victim of jody that's a hundred percent what she tried to paint even in her little award ceremony speech at sentencing right however if each of them had testified against the other, it would not look good because I can tell you they each would have had some horrible things to say about one another. And then they can pretend to say that they did it so the children don't have to testify and go through that trauma. We see they don't care about these children, right? That much is evident. If the children had gotten on the stand, which obviously we know watching would have been horrible for them, right? Can you imagine? The stories these kids would have said to the jury, they would never see the light of day. There's no way they could have those children get on the stand. Now, again, they'll sugarcoat it how they wanted to. It's for the kids. No, mm -mm, absolutely not. They don't care about the kids. Uh, look at the condition of their children. You know, Jody said, I love these children. No, you don't. This, shame on you for even saying so. You know, it makes me sick to my damn stomach. Let's keep going. She can lie on her paperwork, and she probably will. I don't think she's going to give them her history. But I think in the interview, it's going to be apparent that she's mentally ill. Um, and so that will affect how long someone, you know, because they're looking how how repentant are you how much responsibility are you taking how how are you aware that what you've done is wrong and she's not she's the only reason she pled is because she didn't want to do life and she knew i would testify okay so again Piggying back on what I just said a minute ago about the testifying thing, Ruby can say what she wants to. They each would have had horrifying things to say about each other. And again, likewise, we just went over this. There's no way that they, they had to take deals or they would have gone. There's they, they would not have made it through trial. When Ru This is the key element in this clip. When Ruby says they want to see how repentant you are and accountability and accepting and all this type of stuff, she very quickly, and this is why I think that she is way more calculated evil than Jody. okay? She very quick, they, they both are in their own way, but it's like Ruby is more sinister or she's able to maneuver better, I guess. I don't know the word I'm looking for. She very quickly was like, this is what they want to see. This is what I'm going to give them. She's a chameleon. You know, and that's why you saw her get up there and do that whole thing. However, her real self shows. Again, I always go back to that sentencing when she was like, I choose to go to prison. I choose for a prison sentence. That's the part that she can't, she, the, whatever's wrong with her, can't reel that in. Her ego just can't say y'all won. She has to say, I'm choosing to go. And I hope that the doctors, or the, I'm sorry, the judges and all these people realize that. But when I heard this right here, I was like, oh, there you go. There you go. A hundred percent. I hope that, I just hope that whoever needs to listen to this evidence, I'm sure they already have, but you know what I'm saying. When they go up for parole, I hope they play this, right? Uh, that's what I'm getting at. Um, she knows how to play the game. Jody doesn't. You saw her in sentence and she just sat there, you know, lawyer saying, yes, she's sorry. And the judge is like, is she? Because she's been blaming the kids for it the whole time. Yeah, she's really sorry, judge. Ruby was up there talking about, I, I wasn't expecting this. I prepared a few little names, though. You know, and then went off on that whole rant like she was having a damn episode or something, right? Um, but this clip, this part, this phone call right here, again, I was like, oh, Absolutely. She knows what she's doing. Pure evil. When was the last thing you talked to her? Was it that day? Mm -hmm. It was when we were arrested. Yeah, I went, I left early in the morning to 
go to a dentist appointment with Julie. We left at like three in the morning and she calls me sometime in the morning and I and so I went back down but when I got to the house I mean it it looked like it looked like the movies there was a red fire truck there was a black van with tinted windows there was there were two ambulances there were 20 cop cars I mean it was it was did you just sit in your car no I I pulled up and found a spot to park. She lives on a cul-de-sac. I parked in the cul-de-sac, and I walked up, and the the driveway was just full of cops, and I just walked up to the cops. And they said, they said, are you the mother? And I nodded my head, and so they took me in and put me in the casita, and I sat there for a couple hours. I just sat there. I mean, my God, I can't imagine when she pulled up. Now, remember, allegedly, if you go by what Ruby says, you know, at this time she thought cops were evil. She doesn't think that way anymore, you know, and all this kind of stuff. So, you know, when she pulled up, she was whatever kind of rigmarole she has to put her mind through for this stuff. You know, she was like, this is just a testament. You're going to have that chapter and a new release version of the Bible written about you. Just go through this first. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm sure that's part of her pep talk. Um, and you, you saw the footage from the arrest videos, if you've been following this. Um, I mean, it was like the movies, right? But it's like, again, what would you expect? I mean, your child escaped, went to the neighbors in the condition that he was in, looking for food and water and to go into the police. I mean, come on, right? Of course, there's going to be this huge major stuff. But again, it's so fascinating to see how she is just immediately pivots. Not immediately, but, you know, it took her a few months, whatever. Pivots to... I'm the victim. Oh, yeah, well, Jody, yeah, you know, Jody's the evil one, which I'm not trying to say Jody's not. Like, we get this. We all knew it, right? Um, but, you know, I don't believe Ruby is a victim of Jody whatsoever. I think she's a co conspirator with her. Now, speaking of Jody, let's go ahead and listen to some of her clips. But it was like everything got taken out of the house and it's in the storage unit so that I could come to jail. <laughs> It sounds crazy, but it it really feels that way. And I don't know if I'm going to be like some kind of example, but when I get out of here, I have a story to tell, and I am I'm going to try to do everything I can to protect the children because that's what's happening. Is that kids are being just horribly abused, and and instead of the kids, anyways, it's it's a story. But when you come, I'll tell you about it. So what I'm saying is you're being crucified in public opinion. So your fear has to be super, super prepared. And the only way he's going to get prepared is if you push him and ride him. Okay, I will. I'll call him today. He doesn't seem really animated. He seems like, you know, the pictures, the pictures are going to destroy you. And I'm like, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. Those pictures we did not do. He did that to himself, yes. Did we put that on him and then he rubbed around and cut himself? Yes. But we didn't do that. I mean, my God. First of all, just notice the difference in Ruby and her phone calls. Okay, she's on the phone talking about, we didn't do that. You know, it's the kid's phone. Oh, I got a story to tell when I get out of here. I I'm just like... The delusion of these two. So let's start at the very the last thing. We didn't do that. Yeah, we put those on him, but he did this. That right there tells you all you need to know. I mean, again, it was absolutely normal to her to put the duct tape on them, on the children. It was his fault that he tried to get out of it and cause those scrapes and cuts and stuff. Seriously? I mean, that's the part that I'm like... You're lucky that the deal wasn't just life without parole. I mean, see, honestly, y'all, um, this whole thing that she's we're gonna she goes off on a bigger tangent than Ruby does. This whole thing that she's going in with, I've got this story. Oh, you know, it's this and that. She literally thinks that she is like 
the second coming or something y'all okay like the, the whatever this condition is that they have is off the charts with her okay ruby but again ruby's already oh yes i you know I was brainwashed. I was this, you know, this and the other. You don't hear this from from Jody at all. I marry your kid. Nobody wants the truth. Nobody wants the truth. Nobody wants the truth because these kids. You know, I told Doug. I woke up. The spirit told me it's all the devil. I mean, you've seen him. I mean, I've known you what for five years. You've watched him come at me, come at me, come at me, come at me. And you're exactly right because he knows. I know what he's doing and he uses these kids and he uses all of us as the adults the parents that don't hold the kids accountable so now it's it's abusive to make a kid sleep on the floor it's abusive or it's abusive to you know it's ridiculous it's ridiculous you can't even raise your kids anymore yeah 100 percent. she's never getting out of prison absolutely never getting out <laughs> that uh, again all you need to know, she feels completely justified in what she did. That's probably why in court you barely saw her say sorry, right? You know, I mean, it's just, and again, she's the victim of it. That's why the judge was like, she's been saying, like, is she really, you know, think this? Because she thinks it's the kid's fault. She and her world is the victim of circumstance and the children. It's jarring to listen to. So there's a section He's talking about um, talking about the second coming, and you know I'm coming from this place of I was just getting ready to move, and all of a sudden I ended up in prison. You know, like what, what the world? And um, you know, one day you'll know all the details, and it'll, it'll all make sense. But if I could talk in code here, um, <laughs> so he said, um, "This is the Lord talking to the disciples." They asked him, like. Um, when shall these things be? Like, when, when are these things going to come to pass? And so he starts talking to him about the last days. And he, he says you know, that nation shall war against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. But, and then he goes, but before all the, these that he just talked about, they shall lay their hands on you. Now, I have been praying for five months, like, explain this to me. Like, what is going on? Like, I'm willing to go there, but please let me go right side up. Like, if you want me to be there because you want me to be there, then, then great, great. I will not resist it at all, but please help me understand. So I read this this morning, and I just wept and wept and just thanked him and thanked him and thanked him because it just all click, 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 click. So he says, but before all these things, you know, nation rising against nation, they shall lay their hands on you, and I'm like, <laughs> and prosecute you. Yo, just down whatever you got in the cup right here. Eat the damn cup over this one. Makes me sick to my stomach. Literally thinks that she is 100% that she is Jesus has named himself, y'all. Look at how she is. It's so similar to Lori and Chad where they try to align themselves with like these biblical stories and like the self, it's the self-importance for me. Okay. Where she's just like, yeah, you want me to be in prison to do that? Okay, let's go. She's just trying to find, what is it called? What's that theory about sour grape theory or whatever? She's just trying to make up excuses about her getting ready to go spend the rest of her life in prison. That's all this is y'all. Ain't nothing else to see in this train wreck. Y'all just keep on going. That's all this is, okay? She's just trying to make up. She's whatever that whole thing is. She's just trying to make some stuff up at this point, y'all. I mean, why don't we all, right? You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I'm slightly speechless. I, I really am. I'm just. I understand that if you're in the circumstance, you would be needing to find reasons like, well, this is what it's supposed to be. And there is lessons to be learned from it, but not the one she's talking about. She it's immediately converted and reverted into this selfish thing for her and Ruby. Whereas they, they've missed the whole thing completely. Again, she's being persecuted. She's the victim. She's the victim. I'll guarantee you Ruby thinks the same thing, but she just knows how to play the game better than this one does, right? This one, I wouldn't be surprised if Ruby was calling the shots with Jody. okay? They're both disturbed, but in a different way. 
And again, like I said, Ruby just knows how to reel it. Ruby can reel it in. Reel it in, Ruby will call her, okay? She knows when to reel it in. She knows when to hold him. When to fold him. Okay, <laughs> for Jody, mm -mm. she ain't got no poker face. She None of that. She is on full, crazy on full display in the front porch with a tequila, you know, and in one hand. Let's keep going. And he says, and ye shall be betrayed by both parents and brethren and kinsfolk and friends. I'm like, <laughs> oh my gosh, that's exactly what's going on. And some of you shall be caused to be put to death. And ye shall be hated for, by all men for my name's sake. Again, it's, it's the blasphemy for me at this point. Look at how she literally just aligns herself with this. She's like, it's me. Look, I mean, this is me. I'm surprised this isn't about me. I, I just, I, I again, I hope the parole board listens to this every time she goes up for parole. The, the, the absolutely no self-awareness to learn a lesson. She has completely turned this into a selfish act of it is like this divine thing that she's gone on. The fact that why she's there with the kids is just the way that she's being persecuted in her mind, right? Because she feels justified. She feels justified. Probably would have tried to explain that to the judge. Now I can see why she didn't say anything in sentencing or barely did. Because her lawyer is probably like, shut up. Just sit down and shut up because it's like you can't help yourself but to do this BS you're doing. And he's just going to give you old Sparky and be done with it. And then he goes on to say, you know, and I never read that before, but like I've never been in prison. But I just read that and I just wept. I mean, the spirit was like, he just said, this is you. So then I read, I read in Mark, so that was in, that was in um, Luke. And I read in Mark the same kind of thing, you know, because the, the Gospels, they, they wrote similarly. Um, so he said, now the brother shall betray the brother to death and the father, the son, like the father will betray the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents and shall cause them to be put to death. That statement right there is what's going on with me. Y'all, the children will rise up and that's what's going on with me. Again, I can't believe she's saying this stuff on the phone. I, and even more than that, because I get you're in there, it's a different world, like whatever, it's just your little world that you're living in. But the cluelessness and the immediate attaching herself in this way of it's just this level of narcissism that is astounding to me i mean and i get so remember back when uh what's her name i almost said Lori, um ruby literally these people are just interchangeable at this point with me this is shocking okay remember a little bit ago when ruby said about the mental health thing where she was like she'll probably lie about it but they'll probably be able to tell her whatever i mean she she wasn't really off the mark there okay because listening to jody speak the stuff i'm like um what's wrong with you you know what i'm saying it's one thing that the whatever this you know bs was she was spewing before but especially where it's still going now after the fact of like all this horrible stuff has come out and all this evidence and you're still doing this it's literally that what what is wrong with you the children shall rise up and put their parents to death and you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake <laughs> i just i mean I, I probably cried for an hour straight just everything clicked and i said i'm happy to go to prison because <laughs> if, if you if you continue to read the rest of the of the chapter he's like again ain't nothing else to see here folks she's just trying to come up with reasons to be okay with going to prison for the rest of her life that's what this all is big is wrapped around in a big bow right that's all this is is her trying to justify why she should be going there it's, uh, it's the same type thing where, and again, I, now I want to keep saying Lori. Y'all, this is very telling. Where Ruby said, I choose to go to prison. It's the same type thing, which again, I get, right? You're out of control. You want to make sense. You want to gain control. You want to categorize, whatever. It's a human thing. Be, be grateful. If you're in this situation, be grateful because you're, you're one of them. And you, know, you will be saved and... This is, yeah. Well, 
I have just been begging him, like, you've got to explain this to me. Like, I cannot logically figure out what's going on here. And, and that's it. That's what's going on. And the spirit, I mean, I just was, I, when I feel the spirit, I have two physiological reactions. I get really, um, like, shaky, like I'm, like I'm shivering, like I'm cold, or I feel heat, like I have a fever run through me. Those are called hot flashes and being hungry, okay? It's like, uh, probably it comes about 30 minutes before child time, I imagine. Again, it's just, she's trying to find the silver lining in this, wouldn't we all, right? You know, okay, I'm going to go be a minister to the people in prison, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that, and this is being done to me. This right here, if I was a judge and listen to this, I would 100% know that she, mm -mm, nope, send her on down the line. Well, fire old Sparky up. I mean, I'm just being facetious with the old Sparky thing. I get that. But you know what I'm saying. Like, there's just no, this person hasn't learned their lesson at all. Not that it's expected to in this short amount of time. I get that. That, but it's like this shows you where you're starting off at it's like okay this horrible act has taken place all this evidence come out especially against jody with all these other people the stuff the stories about her and you're still in here talking about i'm a martyr you know this no this isn't good at all and i i was like burning up it felt like i was burning up and i was just shaking with gratitude like Here's your, here's your answer. Here's what this is. But in First Peter, chapter four, um, between verses twelve and nineteen, I can't remember exactly how he says it, but he's like, when you have something happen to you and it just feels like it's random, it's not random. Like, like this is intentional. <laughs> like, you're, like, like you, you're, you, it's not just some crazy act of events that's going on. This is like intentional, and that. That First Peter chapter four was another one of the um, footnotes to refer to, you know, that reinforced all this other stuff. I'm like, okay, this is just some crazy, random event. <laughs> Again, I'll say it a thousand times in this video: zero concept that her actions have consequences to them, and that's why she's there literally she is the victim she is the martyr this happened to me it blows my mind and again i'll say this a thousand times no wonder her lawyer barely let her talk if this is what's coming out of her mouth i don't know if you can ever come back from this we've heard all the evidence of all these other fathers and husbands who talk about how she destroyed their families and did this and did that and i mean you see now where she's just no wonder her family doesn't talk to her you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I can't imagine what she's like to deal with. You know, I mean, pff, Ruby wasn't too far off the mark and being like, you know, can you imagine listening to this all day, every day from her? I mean, come on. That's purpose. For this. And then I connected it to my blessing. It's my blessing I've been reading like several times a day. And the blessing is pretty, pretty clear. The, my first, the first paragraph of it says, you know, these are words directly to you from your Heavenly Father. And according to your faith and diligence, um, you'll, they'll either be a comfort to you or, or they won't be. You know, so however much diligence and faith you want to put in them. And then the next paragraph talks about, um, it says, You are a special spirit, chosen and reserved for these last days, and sent forth to the earth in great clouds of glory to share the gospel and prepare the people for the return of the Savior. And then it says, um, one of the reasons you were sent here is to share the gospel. The strongest message you will ever teach is the power of your example. And then he says, through the power of your example and the spoken word, or no, he says, um, your tongue will be loosed and you will be able to teach the gospel in far and distant nations. Literally could be listening to Lori Daybell and Chad. The obsession with these type people of thinking that they are meant to sit here and preach to others. Honey, I, I'll sit out on the lesson. I don't need to learn anything from her. I know she thinks that she's the next, you know, God's gift to mankind with whatever. We don't need to learn whatever you're serving, honey. Okay, we're good over here, right? <laughs> okay, we're going to sit this one out, you know, but thank you. <clears throat> we're really appreciative of that, Jody. Sure.
their obsession with needing to be important and make it a difference yet it is translated through typically violence against other people blows my mind the disassociation that they can hold there's zero ability to connect these two things right here there are two separate worlds to them they do not get this and they feel justified in it and that's what's scary about it is that the, there's this level of entitlement and justification to their actions and then the i'm the victim of this not the kids. I'm the victim. I mean, this again, I'll say it a hundred times. This is why the judge said what he did, you know, because they listened to this phone call. She just, there's zero level of awareness of this, you know, but just the more and more, and you can tell how excited she is. I get she has nothing else to do but read her little Bible, right? Which is probably the worst thing for someone like this. They literally should take this. I mean, I'm being facetious. I know they can't do this, but like, I, I mean, let's be honest, y'all. Whatever she's got going on upstairs, it's not good to leave her alone with the Bible, right? I mean, look at what we're getting out of it. And then he says, you know, through, the, through, the, through the power of your example and the spoken word, you will be a great tool in the hand of the Lord in teaching the gospel to many. So this whole paragraph about an example, an example, an example, I'm like, well, what's a better example than to go to prison unjustly <laughs> and then go teach the gospel? To teach the gospel, like, what's plan on doing? If, if you take anything from this whole video or her phone calls, it's that last thing. What better thing than to go to prison, what better example to lead by than to go to prison unjustly? Again, they think that they are God, okay? They literally doubt, they meaning Ruby and Jody. I hope the parole board listens to these. It's disturbing. And the fact that, like, people like Kevin doesn't seem to get it maybe he does now i don't know people like this they exist and apparently in droves okay because it just seems like that we just see these cases more and more every day and this is their mindset this is their justification this is their level of just operating in the world is that they are meant to bless us all with whatever right and this complete inability to see that and i don't know if it's narcissism i don't know if it's sociopathy or if that's even a word you know what i'm saying but like i don't, I don't know i'm not a doctor i'm not any of his things but i just know that suddenly right with her <laughs> okay we're just gonna call it good at that the phone calls are angering the phone calls are infuriating even though they've gotten the convictions I mean, I, I truly, seeing the evidence that we have seen come out, I hope they literally throw the book at them. You know, because it's, it's as of this recording, it's like we don't know the exact years that they're going to get for each of these charges yet, right? We just know, like, there's been a range or whatever. Top of the line, top of the line, not a minute less, okay? These are dangerous human beings, okay? They are dangerous. I, again, I would argue to say that Ruby probably a little bit more because she knows how to dress it up. Reel it in, Ruby, okay? She knows how to reel it in and assimilate. This one right here, she smoked, okay? She smoked. I can already, probably hasn't even spent one day in the yard and I can already tell you what she's doing right now, you know, and I can already see her. She's going to be reading, leading the church, you know, little Bible group and whatever in her little, you know, cell block eight or whatever um finding more victims in prison to be quite honest is what she's going to do they need to be careful she doesn't get everybody in a damn revolt in there now they need to keep their eye on this one best thing they can do is to take the bible away from her or convert her to some other religion something right i mean this is out of damn control so anyways thank you for suffering through their phone calls with me <laughs> okay and all the things we've been watching right it literally fires me up and i actually have to go to work here and i'm like i'm gonna have to just listen to very calm music on the way to work to just chill and just cleanse cleanse we need some sage in here is what we need I'll turn it to Roscoe to ask him. Anyways, if you're still here, I do thank you for watching. Good God, let me know. What do you think about... Okay, so these are, you've heard all the questions I've asked along the way, right? What do you think, though? I mean, I, am I off here? Are you seeing the same, like, yeah, they think it's the kid's fault. They There's zero 
level of we think we did something wrong, right? So just let me know in the comment section. I appreciate it. Roscoe, though he's not here, does ask you to drop blue sofas down in the comment section so that we can run down there, and I mean run down there and sit on that and talk to you about this case and others. And until we do that, we'll see y'all soon.